Hello, everyone. I am Yanku. I'm today going to give a very quick introduction on Fourier transforms and some of its practical use cases. So a quick background on Fourier transforms is in 1922, Joseph Fourier claimed that any function can be expanded into a series of signs. And since then, his work has been corrected and expanded upon by others to provide the foundation for various forms of Fourier transform that is used today. Uh, so a quick, what is a Fourier transform? Um, it is a type of mathematical transform. It transforms non-periodic functions in the time domain to a function in the corresponding frequency domain. It is a tool to break a function into a sinusoidal form, which is just a combination of sine and cosine waves. And it is normally used in conduction of heat, wave propagation, digital signal processing, and image processing, filtering, etc. So a Fourier transform, if you look there, it is a very, it's not a nice equation. It's interesting math. I'm not going to go into that. Instead, I'm going to give a very a real world example on how it works. So what it does is if you have a smoothie, it finds the recipe for the smoothie. How it does that is it runs your smoothie through a bunch of filters that each one of those filters extract a single ingredient. The reason why you do this is recipes are easier to analyze, compare, and modify than the smoothie itself. And to get the smoothie back, uh, you just blend the ingredients together. So a Fourier transform basically takes a time-based pattern, measures every possible cycle, and returns the overall cycle recipe. Uh, some of the limitations of Fourier transform is the filters must be independent. Uh, the filter for bananas must only capture bananas. The filter for oranges must only capture oranges. Uh, adding more oranges should never have an effect on the bananas reading. Uh, filters must be complete. You won't get a real recipe if you're missing a filter for one of the ingredients inside the, the smoothie. And the smoothie ingredients must be combinable. Smoothies, smoothies can easily be separated and recombined just by blending them together again, whereas a cookie, not so much. The order of ingredients for a cookie and steps matter. So if you quickly look at this graph, what the Fourier transform does is it takes a, on the left a time series graph. It gets the individual frequencies and plots it in a frequency graph with different amplitudes. So some of the practical use cases for a Fourier transform would be, for example, a noise filter. If you take and that first graph is you have a noiseless signal, and in the second graph, you just add random noise to it. If you apply the Fourier transform to it, you would get the one to three, fourth graph, which shows you one high peak for the uh, actual signal that you're looking for. So what you would then do is just look at the specific uh, amplitudes that are above a certain level to find your frequencies that are not noise. So you grab those frequencies and you reconstruct them back into your Fourier, uh, back into your original signal without the noise. Uh, similar to, still looking at this graph, this is also, it can also be used, for example, uh, creating high pass and low pass filters on sound, where if you don't want any frequencies above or below a certain level, you can throw your uh, signal into a Fourier transform and then just remove any frequencies above a certain frequency or below a certain frequency and then reconstruct it back into your original signal. Uh, Fourier transform can also be used in image processing. Uh, so for a quick introduction on just how images can be seen as frequencies, is if you have an original image, your first signal would be just the average color of that image. Your second signal would be a signal going diagonally across the image that start with a low value, go up to a high value, goes up to a high value, and back down to a low value again. This keeps iterating from different 
points and different angles on the image until you get your final image. Or as I show here, this is just 50, uh, the original image using 50% of the uh, frequencies. So fruit transform and image processing can be used for outlier detection is one of the main uses. Um, if you look at the cat image, uh, this here use, specifically uses discrete 2D Fourier transform. Uh, and the image on the right, the top right, is the spectrum of Fourier transform. It is a heat map where the color represent, represents the sine wave's amplitude and the position is frequency. So we're basically treating the image as a function of its pixel position of X and Y. So when the color jumps from black to white, uh, the color changes very quickly. So there's a high amplitude for the frequency sine wave that contributes to that jump. So low frequency waves and sine, low frequency sine waves are responsible for the image's overall color and high frequency sine waves would be responsible for the edges. So if, if we take the image and we extract all the high frequency sine waves, which are here in the middle, uh, you would basically get the original image, but just with its edges that it detects. And conversely, if you remove all the low frequency sine waves, you would get a blurry image. Uh, thank you. This is one of the limitations in general for Fourier transform is that it's computation computationally very expensive to run. So it can't really be run in real time, but the has been done a lot. A lot of work has been done since the original um, models. And if you want to look into this more in your own time, you can specifically start by looking at discrete two D Fourier transforms for images and fast Fourier transform for sound. Thank you.